women get MS more than men do. Is it simply because we exist? There's new research on a possible reason why women get more MS than men do. And you're not going to believe what they found. In this new study out of Stanford University, which was published in the journal Cell on February 1st, they found a possible reason why women get more autoimmune disease than men. It's been a mystery that has confounded researchers as they struggle to understand why us ladies are more susceptible to autoimmune diseases. And a lot of the research has been focused on hormones, and they've been extensively studied. In this new research, however, they found X chromosomes may be one of the major drivers of autoimmune disease risk. Since I've started my channel, I've read a lot of research on MS and autoimmune diseases, and I kind of geek out when I see something new. We live in amazing times where research and science is continuing to figure out how our bodies work. In testing done on mice, the scientists have found an RNA molecule that only us lucky ladies have that is key for our survival that may make us more likely to get attacked by our immune systems. This molecule is called XIST. That's right, ladies. We're more likely to get autoimmune disease just because we exist. Just existing puts us at risk. From the fairer sex, I have to say, that's really not fair. Before we jump into all the juicy details of the study, could I ask you to please like this video and subscribe? This is important because it supports the channel and it helps it to reach more people. Thanks so much. The EXIST molecule teams up with proteins to keep our female cells from activating the double dose of the X chromosome genes, which is a really good thing because if it didn't, it could be deadly to us. Yeah, no good. The researchers found that this molecule can trigger antibodies that latch onto RNA and its protein partners. RNA is ribonucleic acid. It's similar to DNA, but it tends to be a single strand instead of a double strand like DNA. It can be just as important as DNA or even more important because it can carry messages. You may have heard about mRNA in recent years in the news as we've been dealing with this um, big scary virus. It is still early days in the testing, and the testing has only been done on mice, but they did take a look at blood samples from healthy adults and those with autoimmune disease and found that those with autoimmune disease were more likely to have antibodies that recognize the exist protein complexes. The lead author is quoted as saying, this is like a completely different and novel explanation for female bias in immune diseases. What our study really showed was it's not just the second X chromosome, it's actually a very special RNA that comes from that second X chromosome, and just that RNA perhaps plays a major role. This is very cool because it seems like they're zeroing in on something very specific, and it could lead to better ways to diagnose autoimmune diseases and possibly monitor whether or not our treatments are working. Women are three times more likely to develop MS than men, but it's not the only autoimmune disease that has a sex bias. As a group in those with autoimmune diseases, four out of every five patients are female. In some cases, the imbalance is even more lopsided. 90% of lupus patients and 95% of those with Sjogren syndrome are female. And women have been more likely to develop long COVID, which experts say mimics aspects of autoimmune disorders. Okay, girls. This is one area where we really don't want to excel. The news isn't all good for the males, though. The guys are more susceptible to infectious diseases, so at least we don't have that distinction. Did you know that if you look at autoimmune diseases as a whole, they are the third most prevalent disease category outpaced only by cancer and heart disease? Wowza. So they're concluding that the findings indicated that the exist ribonucleoprotein complex selectively expressed in females and evolved in X chromosome dosage compensation drives sex-biased autoimmunity. And some with autoimmune diseases have higher reactivity against proteins from the exist ribonucleoprotein complex, highlighting the potential use of proteins as antigens for screening and early detection of autoimmune disorders. 
This means that they may develop a better test to definitively say whether we have autoimmune disease. Wouldn't it be cool if there was a definitive test? Yes, please. Okay, so this leads me on to something that I feel is a real problem in a lot of research. Much research is being done on males, including using male lice in the lab. In an article about this study, they ended with this. Ultimately, though, is the impact in beginning to address a seriously under-researched molecule exist that drives home the true impact of this study. Chen, the lead researcher, explains that despite the mismatch in representation in the incidence of autoimmunity, women get it more. For several decades, we have used a male cell line as the standard of reference. The male cell line produced no exist and no exist protein DNA complexes, nor have other cells used since for this test. So all of the female's anti-exist complex antibodies, a huge source of women's autoimmune susceptibility, goes unseen. Girls, do you ever feel invisible? There has been a history of excluding women from healthcare research. Women make up 50% of the global population, yet women are still unfairly reflected in healthcare research. This has huge implications for the quality of care and can have life or death consequences. As a result of women being less represented in healthcare research, there are fewer treatments available for women-specific diseases. In addition, because women are unfairly represented in clinical studies, general disease treatments may be less effective for women or have high side effects. Hmm, not sounding too good for us ladies. The challenges are clinical research is male-directed. Most of the research is being done by guys. Gender imbalance persists in peer-reviewed publications and research advancement. The guys are getting their research published more than the ladies. The disparity in research funding is glaring. More funding is going to research on males, so there's less focus on development of treatments and therapies for women. Dang, it is hard to be a girl. Uh, there is good news, though. In 1993, the National Institutes of Health ruled that clinical trials must include women and determine if the treatments affect women differently. There's still a big gap, but things are getting better. I often say we live in amazing times. There's more support for women in research, inclusivity of women is being promoted more, and we are seeing more and more papers like this one that are focused on women and how our bodies work differently than men's bodies but we still have a long way to go. There are things that we can do to support this too. Get involved and use your voice to help. Women are needed to volunteer for clinical trials and research studies. Ask your doctor's office about research studies or sign up with a national research database. I'll post one for the US below, but you can do a search for your own in your country. Be an MS activist and get involved in possibly changing legislation that may improve funding or research to include more women. Let your voice be heard. I participate in my MS State Action Day every year, and I encourage you to attend yours. I'll include a link in the description so you can find out the date for your state. If you live outside the U.S., I encourage you to look at your local MS societies and groups to see how you can become involved. Another way to let your voice be heard is to vote. Having more elected women in office to represent us is important. These women can bring forward concerns about the deep disparities in healthcare and possibly influence changes in legislation and funding for studies to be more inclusive of women. Thanks so much for joining me today. To see more on living well with MS and chronic illness, watch these videos next. Please like and subscribe and subscribe to my newsletter using the link below. Until next time, be well.